morning, YouTube. Tyre Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. In this one, we are looking back at what we saw yesterday. Over 153 wind reports now going up to 156. This was just freshly updated, actually. But with this here, we had a uh, pretty intense, severe weather outbreak, I would say. There were even a few observed tornadoes, but they haven't uh, popped up in the system yet for the uh, Storm Prediction Center. I think they're actually sending survey teams out n now sometime or sometime a little bit later this morning in these regions to confirm whether or not they were tornadoes or damaging winds. But that's not the real reason we're here. We do have marginal risk for today and tomorrow, but Friday also could be a big day. I've been uh, kind of watching Friday over the last couple of days, but confidence has started to increase in the potential for severe weather. Hence, yesterday there was actually a day four slight risk. We've now moved to day three with Friday. So now we can get a first look at all the areas of interest, including the marginal risk. That being said, we'll start out with today's threat, mainly going to be wind and hail across both of these regions towards the plains and towards the southeast. Tornado threat is minimal, but as we've seen earlier on this month, just because you are in a general just because you aren't in a 2% tornado area or even a general thunderstorm risk, sometimes you can still get tornadoes. So let's just make sure we're staying weather aware today. So, not very concerned about today's marginal risk. If things change, of course, we'll adapt accordingly but on day two this day gets a little bit more interesting especially towards the latter half of the evening i do see some tornado potential with this especially towards oklahoma in particular especially over towards fort sill maybe south of the city national weather service as of right now is thinking a little bit further to the north but i think by the time they look at these other model runs they might shift this a tiny bit south Wind threat and the hail threat are also prevalent, but I'm mainly thinking more so towards isolated severe weather more than anything else. It's not going to be a widespread outbreak type deal. Now, Friday, however, that's when I'm more interested in that. I think the sector of interest for uh, tornadoes probably exists greatest across this region here. I have my pen in green, but somewhere through here is where I think the tornado threat really starts to ramp up here, especially towards mid-afternoon into the evening. Can't confirm these areas yet. I know there's going to be decent instability here, but I'm leaning more so towards the hail threat with those storms most likely being elevated. So with that being said here, let's go ahead and get into the models real quick kind of limited on time so we're just going to kind of go from there so here's the setup that we have going on right now it's pretty similar to yesterday's setup where we have a uh, trough that's come in and then on the tail end of that we get a short wave that's formed we're going to see a very similar deal occurring today oops so this is the first short wave right here coming in on wednesday coming in for Wednesday and then Thursday another short wave emerges with this trough that comes it's positively tilted so any of these areas over here if you're concerned about severe weather chances are marginal at best so I wouldn't be so concerned about that later in the evening though the short wave starts to really emerge right here across southern Oklahoma now this is based off the NAM GFS has kind of showed a similar deal two aren't quite in conjunction but I think the NAM has done a better job of picking up on this so far with this, there is a threat with severe. There, the lifting index is kind of weak. Supercell potential is kind of weak, but there is sufficient cape. There's a decent mean layer cape. The uh, st surface cape is at about 750 joules per kilogram. Enough for severe weather. Enough for maybe even a quick spin up. But the kin but uh, kinematically speaking, or the wind profile is not important aggressive enough to where we would be super concerned about tornadoes at least on Thursday Friday is a different story here's that short wave really starting to deepen here as we get into Friday look at this little yellow area where we're getting up to about 50 plus knots that's usually a good point of interest most of the time here 
So we see that even persist heading into into parts of the southeast, maybe even into the late evening and morning hours. By this point, though, I do think the instability will start to decrease across this region a little bit. So the threat should be diminishing by the time it gets towards central Mississippi. Not to say that it's a 0% chance, but it will be much less than what we would be seeing over here towards the Arkla, Texas, and especially the Oklahoma-Texas line. So let's go ahead and look at it from the low-level jet perspective. And this is where my concern really starts to kick in here. Especially for uh, Thursday evening. Look at that. This little area right here where we're getting up to about 40 knots. You really want really at about 30 to 35 knots is about the minimum. So we're starting to get into that point where, okay, it's getting a little bit more hot here. So when we look at this sounding, we may see a weak tornado set up and there you go. Elongated hordeograph too, which is pretty impressive. The storm relative velocity is very impressive with this setup. Capes a little bit higher, there's more instability. So it lends a little bit better into a tornadic setup. We'll have to see whether or not this verifies. And then of course, keep in mind, this is a day out. So a lot of things can change with this setup. We've been seeing that for a bit now. That being said, let's go ahead and move this forward now as we head into Friday. So this is towards lunchtime and just a little bit after. Look at this area of low level jet that started to develop now. We're starting to get into that 40, 45 knot territory again. And this this area intensify and intensifies and actually deepens a bit. I think over here where I'm looking now, I think we'll start to lose some of the other variables that we would need for severe weather. Yep, I clicked the wrong spot. Got to attract to that area. But right over here actually is where I meant to click. Because once you get too close to the low, what ends up happening is you lose, you end up getting more stable air. What will happen is storms won't, won't be able to fire or take advantage of that atmosphere. And there you go. That's a much better look. In fact, this is actually a pretty impressive sounding here. Very unstable atmosphere. We're getting up to about or close to 2,000 joules per kilogram at the surface. Very impressive uh, low-level hold, low-level uh or storm relative felicity here, excuse me. And Hordeograph is elongated again. And it almost looks classic in a way, so this could be a bit of a problem here. Lapse rates are considerable, but you don't necessarily need high lapse rates for tornadoes. It could influence the type of uh, supercell that you end up seeing, though, as well. We could see... Maybe lower precipitation supercells. It's hard to say right now. Thermodynamics can be really tricky. I noticed that a low-level jet definitely seems to hang around over towards Arkansas particularly, especially as we get into the late evening and even overnight hours. So it could be a long evening and even night across this region. By this point, heading into Saturday, I'm not too concerned with the threat at this point. How that evolves, however will determine what I end up doing that day as far as weather is concerned. We look at the surface, no surprises. Temperatures and dew points are going to be pretty impressive. This is heading into Thursday afternoon. Temperatures in the 80s across this region, some 90s possible as well. There are peak storm time for this area on Thursday. We're still in the 70s across southern Oklahoma here, so with that, no real surprise as far as uh, tip the uh, rest of the thermodynamics. Heading into Friday, this would be around 21Z. We get 80 degree temperatures across that Oklahoma-Arkansas line. Over towards Texas, we're getting into the 90s. As a result, even as we head into the evening overnight hours here towards southern uh, Arkansas here, where I'm concerned about tornadoes, we're into the 80s. So. No real, uh, like I said, no real surprises here with the temperatures. We're in that time of year where we're going to be hitting the 70s and 80s. Dew points are going to be pretty similar here. The Gulf of Mexico has been open for business for a bit here. So here is us looking towards Thursday evening, Thursday afternoon. Do see a slight dry, dry line set up trying to develop here, but it's not a very impressive one. 
we do get those uh, dew points into the mid to upper 60s more than sufficient enough for severe weather and the same can be said for Friday the following day in fact it's even more impressive across this region where we're getting into the 70s now so conditions are very prime across this region here other thing to note is there's not much of a dry line setup really that short wave is going to be what in, what uh, kind of induces the lift that we would need for severe weather here so with that being said, we can see some pretty impressive Cape values. We're going to go ahead and look at the mean layer, the mixed layer, as, it, as we typically will call it, too. Go ahead and move this all the way up to, oops, move this all the way up into Thursday and Friday. This is looking into Thursday here, right across this region. Like I said, not the most impressive Cape, but there is a couple of hot spots here where we're getting up to about 1,500 to 2,000 joules. Tornado threat increases, however, we start to lose some of that uh, cape here. The cape is basically just a measure of the instability, and you can kind of see it on the uh, soundings here. I'm just waiting for this one to load it. I'm loading really slow. There, is a, there isn't an impressive hordeograph with this one. This storm's a little more elevated, but look right here, 2,000 joules per kilogram, 1,284 mix layer. But tornado threat's relatively minimal. Those areas that did have a higher tornado threat, we didn't have a lot of cape to work with here. We could still see a couple of storms persisting later into the evening, but look what happens as we get into Friday here. Again, another spot where we're getting up to about 2,000 plus joules. We've looked at those soundings already. By the time we get into the early morning hour Saturday, there's a couple of hot spots left over towards uh, Alabama, but... It's not in conjunction with any sort of lifting mechanism or anything of that sort, so I'm not super concerned about it at this point. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and call this one a video here. This is, this is the current setup that we're looking at. This is prone to changing, so, and I don't necessarily even expect an apocalyptic type scenario at the moment. I don't think it's going to be that, and even if it does become more impressive, as long as you stay weather aware and stay prepared across these areas, you shouldn't have any issues. Just make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do, and I think you'll be just fine. With that being said, make sure you hit that like button, obliterate that subscribe button, and eviscerate the share button. This has been Tyron Metalhead Weatherman. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, you guys have a good day and take care.